individuals off, regardless of who it is. And it doesn't mean that you don't love them. It just means that you love your peace of mind a little bit more. And you have to set boundaries. That's what it's all about, boundaries. All right, what do you say um, as far as being in a relationship when you, um, if you're in a relationship, you're trying to keep, you're trying to keep the peace for the kids. You know what I'm saying? How would you, how would you navigate, how would you navigate that? That is a tough one. However, there are situations that you can't stay in, even if it's a relationship for your children. Some people are abusive, not just physically, but verbally. Some people literally fight in front of their children or say disgusting things in front of their children. So when you're speaking of the mind of little people, our, our children, you have to remember that they absorb and observe everything. Even if you think you are hiding the, the real deal situation from them, children see things. They may not say anything, but they see. So trying to hold on to a damaged relationship for your children, the outcome can be horrible. You don't want your children to pick up on those ways and habits because they are going to take those things with them in their life. They may start acting out at school. They may start acting out in different environments. And then you know, grades can start dropping. Or they can become physically and verbally abusive to their peers or to each other, to their other siblings. So we have to be careful about trying to hold on to damaged relationships. That's, that's something that you have to release. Um, some people are better just being co-parenting partners rather than standing in a relationship and remaining um, lovable partners. All right, well, let me ask you a question. How have you navigated through these same situations? Um, as far as uh, being a host yourself and uh, being in a position where you felt like, all right, I can't cater to this situation no more. And uh, how has it affected me, my kids, and everything else? You know what I mean? And like, what, what have you actually done to uh, navigate yourself in these situations? <laughs> Something that is... Um I guess in our community, a lot of people, it's shame. Well, it used to be. I think we are talking about it more, and that's um, seeking therapy. I've had to do that to bring myself out of a situation um, that was toxic. And I was like, oh, okay, I want to stay because I don't want my children to actually see me with another individual. I want to keep my family. That's not always the case. So, what I did was I, I got some therapy. I actually went on a a spiritual hodge is what I want to call it. Um, I start studying different cultures. I start studying different uh, religions, spirituality, to figure out how people actually cope. I started researching psychology because at first I thought that something was wrong with me. Like, okay, I know this person is no good for me. Why do I want to stay? Um, and I wasn't healed. And I think I took upon a hurt situation after a hurt situation after a hurt situation. So, and um, not to say that I'm just completely innocent, but some things, you know, it is what it is. I think I had become the host <laughs> in a few situations because I was um, trauma loving. I'm only being honest. I was trauma loving. I was taking my trauma, not necessarily 100% being healed and moving on into my next relationship. So um, people cannot fix you. People can help you or point out certain things about you, but they cannot help you not unless you sincerely want to help yourself. So that's where I was. I wanted to help myself. So what I did was I stopped dating. I didn't have any phone numbers for a few years because I felt like doing the spiritual hodge that in my journey that I was on. You went cold turkey on them? Cold turkey. I didn't want to communicate. I didn't want to communicate with a man, not unless it was business, or not unless we had to exchange our child. 